How can sex addiction lead to unimaginable crimes? We've seen in the news P. Diddy, Harvey Weinstein, even Giselle Pericot from France. We know that sex addiction is impacting more and more people because of high speed internet pornography. In this video, I want to break down the connection between sex addiction and porn and how it could possibly escalate to the level of what we're seeing in the news these days. So let's start with the idea of sex addiction and is it real? Some pro-porn scientists would contend that sex addiction is not a real thing. That's because the diagnosis is difficult and it's increasing in this day and age. So the idea is that sex addiction is what's considered hypersexual disorder, compulsive sexual behavior disorder. When a person depends on thinking about sex, watching sex, or engaging in sex to feel good at first and ultimately to not feel bad. So we know that the ICD-11, the International Classification of Diseases, now says that compulsive sexual behavior disorder is in fact real and that it has neurological underpinnings. So sex addiction is happening more and more and why? And why would it possibly escalate to unimaginable crimes? And how could it possibly affect the average person? That's what I want to dig into. Does any of this have to do with you? If you're at home watching porn harmlessly by yourself, I would contend yes. So keep listening. So we know sex addiction is affecting more people. Let's think about how a harmless porn habit could go to a full-blown sex addiction and then become problematic behavior. So when you consume pornography, we know from science that there's high levels of dopamine that are produced in your system, and basically it changes the reward pathways in your brain. The reward center becomes desensitized, and the reward pathways that feed forward towards the frontal lobe, they become impaired. So what happens is now your brain is basically recalibrating to need more dopamine, and you've linked your brain to the dopamine from viewing sex. Now, this isn't any sex that you're viewing. I don't need to tell you that. But what I want you to think about is what sexual experiences, or they're actually performances, sexual performances, acts, genres, people, what are you watching? Because what you watch is what gets linked in your brain. This is very important because most people are watching violent sexual acts that the women who are performing are seemingly enjoying. So now you're getting the sense that this is a really awesome, pleasurable experience for that person. And the friction point between anxiety and pleasure is what creates the most amount of dopamine in your brain. And it makes you want more of it. And we know that this leads to tolerance building in your nervous system and in your brain so you need more dopamine. And the only way to get that is to escalate what you're consuming in porn and to escalate your behaviors. What we see in Harvey Weinstein and in P. Diddy is that they escalated from a pornography habit. At least Harvey Weinstein is thought to be needed to go to therapy for sex addiction. We're going to get back there in a minute, but we know that it's impacted him. So that escalation led from porn viewing these sexual acts to getting the idea that they wanted to experience them in their real life. This is a bridge that happens for many people and it happens very slowly over time. So it can be difficult to put your thumb on. So the idea is you're watching porn and then all of a sudden you click a different genre. People tell me all the time, I really wished I didn't click that because then it clicks over into either gang rape or more violence or younger and younger people, something that doesn't compute morally, but they are excited and aroused by it. So they continue to watch and they continue to escalate clicking new buttons for more dopamine. What happens for many people is they've clicked out all the buttons and now they think I want to experience that in my real life. Now, when it comes to these unimaginable crimes that we're seeing in the news right now, that escalation has led to the narcissistic bubble. Narcissistic bubble 
makes you think that you're the center of your sexual universe and that everybody around you, and if you're still just consuming porn, you see all the people in the screen as objects for your pleasure. But if you take this into the real world, now you see the people around you as the objects for your pleasure. And what it does, this narcissistic bubble, narcissism meaning you're the middle of the universe, what it does is it dehumanizes the people around you. So now you no longer see them as humans to connect with. Empathy decreases. We know as the narcissistic bubble goes up, emotional intelligence decreases. The first pillar of emotional intelligence is self-awareness. So your self-awareness around all of this can tank. Now, what happens in the Harvey Weinstein and P. Diddy cases is that there's also a power differential. The power differential is they can manipulate and control people financially or by their careers. So both of them had budding musicians and artists and actresses who they violated by manipulating them because of this power differential. But I'm going to share with you how you might have this power differential going in your life a little bit. So stay with me. But the idea is the narcissistic bubble dehumanizes the people around them, makes them want to take advantage of them in a sexual way to get very high levels of dopamine because the narcissistic bubble has increased and the emotional intelligence pillars have decreased. They have tanked. So let's put this all together, how pornography, then sex addiction can become unimaginable crimes for especially people with a power differential. But in the case of the Mazan rape case in France, we know there's 72 just average people involved. And we know in both P. Diddy and Harvey Weinstein, you know, these are average people who kind of get sucked into this. How does that happen? It happens because of all of that dopamine that gets flowing at the beginning when you're young and you develop a porn habit and your brain becomes linked to sex to regulate your mood. So now you need it to feel good. And ultimately you need more and more and more of it to not feel bad. And ultimately, this can lead you to do things you never thought you would ever, ever do. So I challenge you right now to think, have you done something? Have you viewed something? Do you have something going that doesn't compute with you mentally? Have you crossed over a boundary and you're finding it difficult to come back? Or do you have a thought in your mind of something you want to go try or do that you viewed in porn? This is how sex addiction becomes crimes that people couldn't see coming. And then, of course, once you're in the middle of it, it continues to escalate and brew. Now, one other thought is that these ideas didn't come out of thin air. So P. Diddy is said to have orchestrated freak offs where he would fly women in and he would have experiences where there were male sex workers who were having these freak offs with women violating them. Where'd he get that idea? That wasn't his idea that was brewing in his system. All ideas come from somewhere else. That's the reality. So if you have an idea that you're going to orchestrate a giant freak off, that came from pornography. That is what pornography does to people. It gives them ideas of the things that they want to experience in the real world because of all the dopamine associated with it. So this isn't just the problem of P. Diddy and Harvey Weinstein. This is every man and woman's problem who consume porn. Some of you, it won't happen where this escalates. I talk with thousands of people. I talk with people who have affairs. I talk with people who purchase sexual experiences, never thought they would. These are just average good human beings that don't want to be in the position they find themselves. I find people, I talk with people who have had sex with people, hookups, and they're married. They don't want that. I've had people who are sick with themselves because they have gone over to the other side because of the dopamine. So what's the solution to this? It's absolutely imperative that you stop watching pornography so these ideas don't become embedded into your nervous system to the level that we are now seeing in the news. This is how it happens. It happens when you find pornography when you're young. 
That's the seeds of sex addiction. You find porn and you masturbate and it feels good in your brain. Dopamine. But if you keep watering those seeds over time, you very likely will find yourself tolerance building, leading to escalation, leading to something you wish you would have never done. And hopefully you can back this out now by leaving porn behind, getting into a program so you can succeed as quickly as possible and unwiring your brain from the need for sex, the compulsion to go back to this high level of dopamine from unrealistic, unnatural sexual performances that you've been consuming probably for a lifetime. So now's the time to quit porn for good and heal your brain so that you don't find yourself in the position that many people are finding themselves in now. Okay, for more information, please go over to the blog post on this subject, drtrishley.com. You can see the range of services that we provide because it is my true hope that you're able to leave pornography behind and relink your brain back to all the dopamine in your life. That's what life is supposed to be about. You're supposed to be getting dopamine at healthy levels from your work, from your hobbies, and from your relationships. That's what I want for you. So go over to drtrishley.com and as always, control your brain or it'll control you.